It might not look like it, but this humble prototype is at the cutting edge of both cancer and space research. A lot of my ideas are very out there. We're all very excited where this research is heading, uh, and more importantly, the implications and impact that it could potentially uh, provide the community. In a matter of months, Dr Joshua Chow is planning on placing cancer cells into a device like this and sending it into space. Well, if you know Josh, he's, uh, he always comes up with kind of wacky ideas like that, so it wasn't completely, completely out of the scope of him, but still was something that was outside of what he usually says. In their lab at UTS, Josh and his student Anthony Carillos have found that this microgravity simulator has a remarkable effect on cancer cells. So what we found was that we put in four different types of cancer, ovarian, breast, nose and lung cancer in there. And what we found was that in 24 hours in this microgravity condition, 80 to 90 percent of the cancer cells actually die. And this is without any um, you know, drug treatment or anything. It's just simply in this microgravity uh, environment. So they're a few of the hardest cancers to, um, to kill and we've had some really interesting results with those. Um, so just having that ability to be that close to that kind of research and having such a profound effect is, is really rewarding. Anthony and Josh's simulator mimics a space environment by reducing gravity. Essentially, we want the cells to experience what's known as microgravity. So if you've ever been on a roller coaster, you have that gut feeling of dropping. So we constantly want the cells to experience that. They believe the reduced gravity kills the cancer cells because it stops them from communicating with each other. The microgravity is working really well. The cells are responding to it. We see that. Our hypothesis is that you know, they're, they can no longer sense their surrounding. Um, and uh, therefore the cells go into the state of apoptosis or cell death. Josh has been fascinated by space since he was a boy. I think every boy or girl, they always have some sort of dream of wanting to be an astronaut one day, exploring space. He's turned that fascination into a career focused on using space technology to treat diseases like osteoporosis and cancer. What we're seeing now is that we're able to use this technology to actually better understand not only the human biology, but also how disease function. His four-year-old son, Joseph, shares the same interest in space. And today, Josh is sharing his research with his son's class in a very unusual show and tell. My name is Josh, and I'm Joseph's father. And so, so today, I'm going to talk to you about space. It's not a normal environment like Earth. This is where they do a lot of research. There's some good cells and also bad cells, right? So they're bad cells called cancer. It's a very bad cell and it's very naughty. So we're taking the bad cells, put it in this little box. It's about the size of a tissue box and then send it into the International Space Station where there's zero gravity. And then we can see how we're going to kill all the bad cells. Back in the lab, there's a lot of work to be done before next year's rocket launch. We're limited to the, the dimensions and the weight of what we can send up there. So a lot of the technology actually have to be miniaturized. And then we have to put in the elements of keeping the cells alive. How does it collect the data automatically? Josh hopes that his promising lab results showing that cancer cells die in low gravity will be replicated in space. The plan is to learn more about the disease and forge a new path for cancer treatment. In my head, this is not going to be a golden bullet to cure cancer, but it can work in parallel to existing therapies, um, drug treatments and, and, and so forth to help speed up or increase the efficiency of current treatment. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.